Goldman's Apple Card business has a surprising subprime problem. If you look at their customers, about 28% of their loans go out to people with uh, FICO scores lower than 660. You have people who are living paycheck to paycheck, and at the end of the month, they're deciding whether or not uh, they're going to pay off their Apple Card. You guys, the Apple Card might be getting dropped by Goldman Sachs. Reports are saying Goldman Sachs is now in discussions with Amex to transfer the Apple credit card and high yield savings account to Amex. Goldman Sachs is probably looking to unload the Apple Card because they've been losing literally billions billions of dollars since it launched back in 2019. But let's assume the deal goes through. There are seven upgrades that only Amex can make to the Apple Card once this deal is done, including one upgrade that would instantly add hundreds of dollars in value to the Apple Card on day one. And don't forget to download my cheat sheet with links to every card that shows your starting credit limit before approval. You'll never have to waste a hard credit pull just to be smacked in the face with a low credit limit. Just hit the link below. Now, the first upgrade that Amex can make to the Apple Card is offering the Apple Card in different colors and materials. When the Apple Card first launched, there were so many reports saying that you had to take special care of the card. It was super delicate. Just take a look at this report. Apple warns, you may permanently discolor your Apple Card if it's stored in leather. In leather, that's your wallet. So they don't even want you to be carrying this thing. As for how to safely store the card, Apple is advising customers to store it in some container made of soft material, but not leather, and to make sure it doesn't come into contact with any loose metal objects. Okay, so they don't want you to put it in your wallet and they don't want it next to keys. So what are they telling you? They don't want you carrying this on your person like a normal credit card. Why even give you a physical card at this point? I mean, it's basically like a paperweight. It's like a ornament, something that you put on the shelf, something you put on display. It says, but what you're mostly signing up for here is the Apple Card as a status symbol. And Apple even provided their own specifications and instructions on their website, like a how-to guide to store their super delicate credit card. Take a look at this. How to safely store and carry your titanium Apple Card. Store your titanium Apple Card in a wallet, pocket, or bag made of soft materials. So what do you mean it's supposed to be stored on its own? You're just supposed to slide this in your pocket with no other cards or keys or your phone or anything else. You can't have a Leatherman or anything. You have to put it in one velvety microfiber pocket. Who has a pocket like that? Nobody. And then they say, place your card in a slot in your wallet or billfold without touching another credit card. So you gotta dedicate one slot. You can't have it touching any other card. That is outrageous. If two credit cards are placed in the same slot, your card could become scratched. Once you get this in the mail, don't put it in a wallet like you normally would with a credit card. You wanna go ahead and put this into a lockbox, put this in a sock drawer, keep it safe, or just put it on display on a bookshelf somewhere. That's it. So what Amex can bring to the table is all of their experience with producing metal cards, plastic cards, cards of different colorways, cards for different events. So if you look at their gold card, it comes in standard classic gold and it comes in rose gold. Even if you look at the platinum card, the platinum card comes in this standard platinum, but also these funky designs that they've added recently. I think they look terrible. You can tell, let me know in the comments if you like these designs on the platinum card. All right, let me know if you're holding one. I just think these designs look bad, but at least we know that they have experience making multiple designs. And so they could bring that to the table and you could see Apple cards in titanium without any sort of white resurfacing done to it so that it's more scratch resistant. You could see Apple card in black, in gold. I could definitely see Amex allowing that to take place. So the Apple Card actually earns the highest rewards when you use Apple Pay. So when you use Apple Pay, you're earning 2% cash back, which is nice. So you don't actually wanna use the physical card because that's only earning 1% cash back. So when the Apple Card first launched, as it says here, Apple Pay is accepted in more than 1 million retail stores, restaurants, and gas stations. And by the beginning of 2019, Apple Pay was available in 65% of US retail locations. 74% of the top merchants in the United States accept Apple Pay, which is nice. I mean, in my experience, wireless payment is available in most large retailers, but the problem is it's not available everywhere and it's not that close to 100% yet. So here are just a few chains that Apple Pay is not available yet. It's gonna be Walmart is one, Kroger, Home Depot, 
Amazon Fresh, and if you're in Texas, HEB. And that's just a short list of places that Apple Pay is still not accepted yet. But here's the thing, Amex has a global network of ties and relationships that they can leverage to expedite the proliferation and the acceptance of something like Apple Pay. They have point of sale systems like you see here. You got mobile point of sale. It says right here, American Express can put you in touch with providers who offer a variety of point of sale, mobile point of sale solutions to meet the unique needs of merchants. So Amex has those close connections and the ability to progress that push to get Apple Pay and wireless payments in terminals in more mom and pop shops that currently don't accept Apple Pay. And they could probably make some uh, deals with large retailers like Walmart that's gonna make them happy so that you can finally go shop at Walmart, which I know many of you do, so you can finally use Apple Pay there. Next, there's a common credit card benefit that the Apple Cart has really failed to implement on a large scale frequently, and that is intro bonuses and sign up bonuses. So it says here, Apple Car has promotions lined up of $75 per sign up and $125 per family share offer. Apple Car is offering new users a cashback sign up bonus. Existing card holders can also add family members as authorized users and earn $125 in daily cash. The problem is that most other cars are gonna offer a sign up bonus of like $200 all the time, like it's never ending perpetually. And Apple chooses to add these sign up bonuses kind of like on a seasonal basis. And so you can't really count on it. Another problem is that it's too low. It's only 75 bucks. It really should be raised up to 200 bucks. And the sign up bonus only goes to the person signing up, not the other person that's referring them. Usually the person that's referring a new customer and the person that gets referred both get some sort of bonus. In this respect, Apple doesn't do that. And so you can see here, this is another no annual fee card. A lot of people like is the Blue Cash Everyday card and it earns $200 cash back when you spend $2,000 within the first six months, which is easy to hit because it's half the year. And Apple just never got to that point. They felt like they don't need to offer you that much. And I disagree flatly. I think Amex can bring their competitive nature to the Apple Card and make sure that it's more promising and more encouraging for people who actually sign up. And you're gonna want to refer somebody and you're gonna want to sign up because it actually gives you a decently sized sign up bonus. So there's a second common intro bonus that the Apple Card never offered, and that's a 0% interest on purchases and APR. And so if you look at the everyday card again, you get 0% APR on purchases and balance transfers for 15 months from the date of account opening. Listen, that's 15 months. That's almost a year and a half that you get to make purchases and transfer balances and consolidate debt from another card that you may have you know, an issue with that you were paying interest on. You can consolidate that onto an Amex card and then you basically get to save a good amount of money by having a no interest period for such a long period of time. And Apple just choose flatly not to offer that. And I think Amex can bring you something to the table, maybe in the tune of six months or a year. It doesn't have to necessarily be 15 months because that's above and beyond what's standard. But I can definitely see Amex making the Apple Card more competitive and giving you some sort of 0% interest period. So the Apple Card has a bonus category problem. And that's because you're only earning that elevated 3% cash back in just about eight or nine merchants. And so if you take a look here, you're getting it at Apple, which makes complete sense. It really should be more like 5%, but we'll leave that there for now. But you're getting it at Uber Eats, Uber, Nike, Walgreens, T-Mobile, Panera Bread, Ace Hardware, and then Exxon Mobil. It's been this way for basically the entire time. Like I think in 2019, they came out with maybe seven or eight and they added one or two in the following year. But after that, it was nothing. There was no revamp, no refresh, no upgrades. They just kept it at the standard eight bonus merchants. Now, what I think Amex can bring to the table is a different model other than the bonus merchants model. They can do a bonus category. So you get a full category of purchases that encompasses tens of thousands of merchants in that one category. And I think that's gonna be a lot more beneficial for any card holder because you don't have to go and search around for these different merchants that may not even be available in your city if you're in a small town. If you look at the everyday card, which is also no annual fee, so you know it can be done, you're getting 3% cash back on supermarkets, or you're getting 3% cash back on US retail purchases, or on gas. So I think a good one for them to choose would be dining. They're gonna really be wanting to get that 3% cash back 
when they dine out, use Uber Eats, use DoorDash, they're gonna love that. And they're gonna be eating out at restaurants. And just think it, you'd be great for travel as well because you're gonna be eating at higher end restaurants. You're gonna get a lot of value from that. So if they take away the bonus merchant and just add a bonus category like dining, I think it'll draw a lot more favor with people. Next, this is a feature that Apple has done a good job on, but I think they can make it even better if they switch to Amex. Now the feature is send and receive money with Apple Cash. Use Apple Cash to send and receive money with people you know. So it's like peer-to-peer -peer transfer, which is nice. But the problem is that it's only gonna be cash that you've earned for cash back that you transfer it into your Apple wallet and you're only gonna be sending it to other Apple users. We wanna expand that and make it more ubiquitous, more available and transferable to everybody you know, in the US at least. So Amex, what they have is send and split. Now, a lot of people don't know about this. Send and split allows you, and it's in partnership with Venmo and PayPal, and it allows you to send money or split purchases with any other Venmo or PayPal user right from the Amex app. And there's no credit card fee. It says, is there a limit to how much money I can add to my Amex Send account? And so for the Platinum is $4,000 and for all other consumer cards, it's gonna be $2,000. So the great thing about this is that you're able to use your available limit. So if you have a $10,000 limit, you can use $2,000 of that 20% to send to a friend and you're gonna have that 30 day float, that 30 day grace period, interest free, fee free to send to them. And so if they gotta pay you back, you might not even realize that the money's gone. It'll ha never have to leave your checking account or savings account. And it's just a nice feature that's gonna be available in your back pocket in a pinch or something if you want some extra cash flow for the month. So I could definitely see Amex adding that to an already decent feature of allowing you to, to send that cash back from one Apple customer to another, but this could allow you to send uh, your available limit, a portion of your available limit to anyone via Venmo and PayPal, making it more accessible to people. Next, I see a lot of people complaining about the lack of purchase protection. A lot of us may not be thinking about this, but you, it's nice to have the ability to go back and get refunded on a purchase if it's defective, if it's stolen or lost. You wanna have that added safety net just in case. And so it's actually a MasterCard benefit. The Apple Card doesn't have it. It has zero liability protection. It's got MasterCard, identity theft protection, shop runner, and a few others, but it doesn't have purchase protection. But guess who does? Amex has purchase protection. So guess what? If you have an Amex card, and this is for the blue everyday card, you're getting up to 90 days from the date of the covered purchase to put that claim in for the purchase and get it refunded. You can get up to $1,000 refunded per purchase, and you can get up to $50,000 per calendar year for those purchases. So just imagine if you're able to use your Apple card to pay for some of these purchases that you've made, maybe in store, maybe online, that you really want to have the extra protections behind. Maybe Amex can implement that on the Apple card when this deal gets done. You know, the Apple Car is still one of the better cars for getting frequent credit limit increases. And in this next video, I'll show you step-by-step step how one person was able to increase their limit to $40,000. Thank you for watching.